Hey you. So uh, I was out here in nature once again. It's usually what I do on Sundays. And I thought I'd make a video. I was inspired because I keep seeing old growth trees, stumps that are like five times bigger than these normal sized trees here. And it just got me thinking, got me thinking specifically about pre and post and Atlantean epoch. We're talking around 12,000 years ago or more. There was a gigantic worldwide global civilization. And we know this because, and they were highly evolved technologically and spiritually. And we know this because of the monoliths that they left all around the world on each continent, the various pyramids, but also the biggest tell is the monoliths because of the way they were built. We don't even have technology today to cut it like they did. They used something more advanced than diamond tip saws, which is what we invented in the late, uh, or the early 19th century. No, no, late 19th century. So whatever they used was more advanced than that. And there's more evidence than just saws. There's all kinds of weird shit. Another tell is that what they, the, the masonry skills that they used were the same all around on these monoliths. And that is a uh, polygonal masonry, which is when the stones are different shapes and sizes, but they seamlessly, and I'm talking a human hair can't even fit in between these stones. They seamlessly connect together, which is fucking insane. If you think about that, um, they're all over the place. They're in, you know, ancient Egypt, they're in Peru, they're in Baalbek, they're in Turkey. You know, they're all over the place. There's that giant pyramid in Bosnia. And a lot of these pyramids were taken back by earth, by nature. But, uh, so we live in a modern society that is dominated by the mainstream. And you know this by now, um, they dominate the, the medical field. They dominate, you know, science and specifically they dominate, um, archaeology and anything that doesn't fit into their paradigm which is their paradigm is that man to you know cross the land bridge over to the americas well around 10,000 bc and we, they were just fucking cavemen stone tools well then they all of a sudden were just supposed to pull astronomy mathematics culture language and advance spirituality out of their ass all of a sudden and create civilization um, in uh, ancient Sumer and Babylon. And then that supposedly spread all over the place, but that's just not true. What there is is evidence in all these sites around the world with monoliths and pyramids. There's evidence of recycling. And what I mean by that is all these ancient cultures Everything from Sumer, Babylon, the Romans, the Egyptians, even the dynastic Egyptians, they all seem to find these gigantic monoliths that were built with high technology. And then they, they settled there and they colonized there and they built civilization on top of the ruins. And, and off, in most cases, they built temples on top of the ruins. Well, there's evidence to suggest that these ancient monolithic ruins were in fact pre-Diluvian, which means pre-flood. So we're talking 12,000 or 11,000 years plus ago. So this is thousands more years than the mainstream um, says that the, the humans became civilized, so to speak. Um, there's just so much evidence. Some of the biggest evidence is the the uh, water erosion on the great Sp on the the Sphinx in Egypt. Um, it shows that there was a different climate, and when there was a different climate in Egypt, it wasn't always a desert. It was a tropical region. So something crazy happened. Pole shift, uh, asteroid comet hit. Something happened around twelve thousand years ago, and wiped out these 
this global civilization. So here's a little evidence. So we're taught that the giant, temp the giant pyramids in Egypt were a temple to Khufu or whatever, uh, just to put one man's corpse inside of all that crazy effort. Just to put one egotistical dude's corpse inside of, and it was built in 20 years by slaves. Fucking bullshit. So there's evidence, there's new evidence coming out to suggest that, in fact, the pyramids were gigantic uh, orgon energy transceivers. Um, and we, and if you know anything about sacred geometry and about the light body and the stuff that I share, the right side up tetrahedron or pyramidal shape in three dimensional terms is something that collects ionized energy from the earth and directs it upwards out the top and those helical Birkeley currents straight out the top. Um, there's photographic evidence of this taken with a special camera at the Bosnian pyramid. They actually took a picture of the energy that's still after fucking over 10,000 years laying there decaying, still emitting this energy. So, and then, so what I like to think is that they had gigantic water aquifers underneath the pyramids running that in line with these crystals inside of the stones inside the granite with the geometric shape of the tetrahedron it was collecting ionized energy from the earth and giving it out like a gigantic wi-fi router basically and then i think that the uh those giant stones that are all around it <laughs> in the shape of an obelisk are like little Wi-Fi receivers, basically. So the whole thing, if you think about it, the pyramid itself would be connecting to these obelisks and creating a gigantic spherical uh, energetic field where one could go in and become healed and receive downloads and, and experience higher consciousness, activated pineal gland, all that stuff, activate Kundalini, everything. So what I think is that the, this gigantic global civilization of extremely advanced humans, I'm not saying they, they didn't have to be humans, but I think they were. They were just advanced humans. They, and they obviously talk about getting help and communing with people from the stars. That's one thing that they all say, too. They, they were so much more advanced than us. And then all of a sudden an event, a, a pole shift, a comet, something, wiped them out all of them at the same time and this is all recorded by every single major civilization there was a giant flood so there is also evidence to suggest that there wasn't just flood but there was fire so there's also in egypt searing uh scars on a lot of the statues and stones something burnt the shit out of a lot of the stones and statues in Egypt and it all got hit from the east that would suggest some kind of a wave of fire some kind of a asteroid impact or something um, so with my mind my Aquarius moon it just makes me trip out on it thinking and connecting the dots could this civilization been humans at the peak of a cycle you know how history is cyclical and civilizations rise and fall well if you think about if you think about the procession of the equinox, that 25,000 year cycle, there's a lot of people that say that the Younger Dryas or that event that happened 12,000 years ago, that cataclysm was the halfway mark of this 25,000 year procession of the equinox cycle. So what if every, every time, it's like a giant school, you know that, Earth is a school, the soul system is a giant college basically for souls. So what if the souls incarnate here, and I'm just, I'm just hypothesizing or speculating, what if the souls incarnate here and they live in reincarnated life spans and for that 12,000 year cycle or longer, they, they might incarnate for the whole 25,000 years or maybe even longer, but there's a giant cataclysm that kind of recycles and restarts humanity right in the middle mark of that 25,000 year procession of the equinox cycle. That's what I think is happening. And guess what? 
we're right in the halfway mark again, you know. The Mayans talked about 2012. There's a lot of people that think that that was, uh, that was an inaccurate time. A lot of people say 2020 is what they meant. But if you think about it, something did happen in 2012. That's when I spiritually woke up. That's when I had my spiritual awakening. And that's when fucking millions of other people did too. And the word apocalypse just means great change. It doesn't mean devastation. So... It's just trippy to think about, man. We live in such an incredible universe and, and planet and our lives are more complex and interesting than any movie ever made, any, any story ever told. It's so complex. But yeah, so another thing is, is that we're told that Atlantis became decadent and that's what we're at now. We're at the peak of our technology you know, the, the governments have shit that we don't even know about, obviously. Anti-gravitic vehicles, free energy devices, all that shit, dude. And they're obviously working with a interdimensional force that is not of this world that wants us to merge with technology. A synthetic consciousness called AI. But I think what happens is around the halfway mark of the 25,000 year procession of the equinox, and that's just a rough estimate. I think it's, some people say 25,600 years. Some people say 26,000 years. But what seems to happen is, is that it's a, ultimately a battle between good and evil. And these spiritual forces of consciousness, good and evil, battle for the soul of humanity. And civilizations are built. And believe it or not, the Luciferic forces rule this world especially right now, and especially for the last 10,000 years plus. Um, what I mean by that is anti-nature, anti-God. Um, and the, just, look, just look around you. The whole system is based on corruption and, and uh, disconnection from conscious, like pure source consciousness. So, you know, the, the cults that run this planet seem to worship the energies of Saturn and then get us to direct our consciousness into Saturn and bringing it onto the planet. It's a giant control structure or soul harvester, energy harvester. We're like cattle to them. But what seems to happen is that God or Christ, which is the son of God, which is the son, <laughs> which is a spiritual conscious consciousness that it can be found within our sun and probably all stars it seems to get to come back and it gets to come back through con not just a man but through all human beings and through consciousness and it comes through the sun through solar codes and photons and consciousness and i think what happens is that the sun emits a giant solar flare a, a mini micronova <laughs> and so that would explain the burning on the ancient monoliths, the gigantic floods and sea level rising or ice caps melting, and um, the disappearance of a highly advanced global civilization. Basically, humanity starts from scratch. So if you think about it, the last 12,000 years since the flood of the cataclysm, humanity has been devolving in entropy. They went, if you research the ancient pre-Diluvian cultures, they went from studying the stars to such an advanced level and such advanced masonry and architecture aligned with the stars. Just super complex civilization. And then it goes into Stone Age and then slowly works its way back up. So just something to think about. It's pretty trippy. I love y'all. I'm going to continue my hike. Get some uh, ionized charged particles out of this planet. I got my organic sugar cane shoes on. <laughs> I love y'all. Happy Sunday. Oh yeah, there was a couple things I forgot to mention. <clears throat> what I think the Luciferic forces or the Aramonic forces or the Satanic forces are doing is that they know about these cycles, but they can't ascend through solar codes. So what they seem to be doing is controlling this cataclysmic collapse of civilization. They seem to be siphoning out our energy and resources, our money. Just look at Congress, what they're doing. 
and all over the world, the Great Reset, they seem to be siphoning out all of our energy and, and money, building the technology so they can get the fuck out of here. You know, they, a lot of their little minions talk about 2030 and climate change and the world's going to end by then and this and that. Well, they seem to be aware. They are very aware of the occult and ancient hidden teachings and technology. And if you know anything about evil and a consciousness polarized towards service to self, they can't ascend through, through the Son of God, or through codes, through the Christ consciousness. Um, they're not going to turn into a or butterfly into a beautiful light body. They're going to be fucking vaporized and their soul is going to be recycled back to wherever they're resonating to. So they're trying to escape this judgment. They don't want to do the karmic work and, and just forgive themselves and others and release those karmic burdens so they can ascend. Instead, what they're doing is they're trying to escape their karma or their hell by reigning in entropy or essentially reigning in hell. Because this is essentially what hell is, is entropy or decay. Um, so what is a light body? It's a torus. What is, what is a torus essentially? It's a free-flowing negentropic field. So negentropy is the opposite of entropy. Negentropy basically means to flow and to keep flowing. Um, there's a reason why your heart is the only organ that never stops working because it's in the middle of that torus or your light body. It's right where the zero point is, which is your best connection to source consciousness or God. So they don't have that connection to source. They don't have a free flowing light body. So they need to escape judgment. They need to build synthetic technology and try to become immortal in the, the simulation of matter. Okay. And this is ultimately you have to feel kind of sorry for them. They're only prolonging their, their karma and in fact, making it worse, but they've been deceived. They've been lied to by the Luciferic and cyber Satan and that polarized consciousness that they will become immortal if they just merge with the technology. And unfortunately, I personally would rather ascend in dimensional octaves and experience more negentropy and bliss. And that's what you're all going to, that's what you're all going to do. That's where you're going to go. I know you are. Every single one of you is going to ascend. Okay. You wouldn't be listening to me if you weren't. You would have called me some crazy fucking conspiracy theorist. The first video you watched, you would have watched me for not even a minute. Okay. You would have, you would have put a little smart ass comment that said, damn, I wish I had some of what he's smoking. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I just wanted to, I forgot to say all that too. And I especially forgot to say, stay up, motherfucker. Yeah.